Hi, and welcome to our back to school night for IB Math AA, SL, and HL. Um, it's for both classes because they both exist in the same class um, every day. So the AA stands for analysis and approaches, the SL is for standard level, and the HL is higher level. Um, so they're both very rigorous courses. Um, we'll talk about the differences as we move forward here. This video is specifically for year one, uh, as this is a two year course and um, it'll go through the expectations for this year, make sure uh, you understand the, different, the differences between the courses, and then we'll talk briefly about the assessments, but that will really be an emphasis for the next year as well. So the objectives I have for this video are to introduce you to the course, uh, its curriculum, and the assessments associated, and we're also gonna talk about how TOK, or theory of knowledge, gets applied into the course as well. I imagine at this point you're fairly familiar with the IB mission statement and it is something that we believe in, something that we work for and strive to make sure that we are meeting the needs of the students and giving them both a rigorous um, curriculum but also giving them a support system as well. And that's something that we're able to do um, with our small class sizes. Uh, also with the small class sizes, we're really able to emphasize the IB learner profile. Now, hopefully your son or daughter comes into um, the IB program with quite a few strengths on this list here. And that's our job as teachers to help strengthen those strengths even more, but also find the opportunities to improve the strength in some of the profiles that might not necessarily be a strength for your son or daughter. As far as the courses that are offered, IB currently offers four different math classes. They offer the analysis and approaches at both the standard level and the higher level. And they offer the applications and approach, uh, applications and interpretation at both the SL and the HL level as well. However, here at FTHS, we only offer the SL. All courses span two years, and generally speaking, they cover similar content, uh, those being pre-calculus topics, calculus topics, and statistics topics, but they differ in the manner of instruction because the analysis and approaches will be uh, quote unquote more pure math and the applications and interpretation will focus less on the pure math and more on the application interpretation of that math to different fields. They will also differ in pace and mastery expected. Um, the higher level will be expected to work at a faster pace than the standard level uh, and will require more mastery of the topics as well. We'll be using graphing calculators throughout the course, and if you if your son or daughter does not currently have a graphing calculator, um, Texas Instrument, or TI, is offering a 90-day free trial for a desktop version. Um, and there's also uh, applications that are both available on the Android and the Apple um, markets as well for the cell phones, which are great tools. Um, they look exactly like the graphing calculators that we uh, have in the classroom. Obviously, while we're on remote, it's a little bit harder to, to use those, but there are options. Um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I can help you out with that. All right. What does analysis and approaches mean? Okay, so let's kind of go through this here. It says this course recognizes the need for analytical expertise in a world where innovation is increasingly dependent on a deep understanding of mathematics. So this idea of a deep understanding of mathematics is really what we're focusing on here. We really are going to deal with the theorems, we're gonna deal with the derivations of them and work through proofs on a chapter by chapter basis. There's a lot of proofs that we're gonna be going through. This course includes topics that are both traditionally part of pre-university mathematics courses, those being the, um, the pre-calculus courses, uh, as well as topics that are amenable to investigation, conjecture and proof, um, for instance, the study of sequences and series at both the SL and HL level and proof by induction at the HL level. So, like I said, very rigorous mathematics topics um, that the, the AA, the analysis and approaches, are really focusing on here. The course allows for the use of technology as fluency in relevant mathematics software and handheld technology is important regardless of the course uh, choice of course. Um, however, math... Um, analysis and approaches, has a strong emphasis on the ability to construct, communicate, and justify correct mathematical arguments. What that basically means is that in the AA course, we'll be using the graphing calculator a little bit less than you would in the AI course, but we'll still be looking at it. Let's see. 
Okay, so AI, AA versus AI, what's the difference? So all the math courses that are in the IB program are going to be rigorous, but there's some differences that's important to note. It says AA is intended for students who have a very strong math background. So they were doing very well in their Algebra 2 class, um, the Algebra 2 honors class, whichever class they came from. And they might have an interest in studying math or science in college. AA students typically thrive in exploring pure math. So they're, they're strong foundation in what's going on, but they also, you know, they kind of enjoy it. They like going through the math there. And they're capable of working through a rigorous curriculum at a fast pace because both AA courses will be working at a faster pace than the AI course. AI, however, is intended for students who are still strong in math because you still need to be strong in order to do well in that course, but find the application of math to be more enjoyable. So application of the topics is really the point of emphasis in the AI course. Um, and AI students might have the opportunity for uh, more student support as their, their curriculum is slightly less demanding as far as content goes. With that in mind, this is not an AI course, this is the AA course, so let's focus on the difference between the HL and the SL in this course, because like I said, they both exist in the same classroom. All right, so how does that work? Well, HL students tend to enjoy mathematics, they like proving theorems, and they like finding different ways to solve problems. They have a very, very strong foundation in algebra, and they're not gonna require much review of previous previously explored topics. It's not that I don't want to review with them, it's just that the curriculum is so demanding that we don't have the time to do such. SL students in the AA are definitely um, required to be strong math students, but there's gonna be a little bit of extra support um, for them because of a slightly less compact curriculum. Year one topics, so the topics that we're gonna be talking about this year that we're already into. Foundational topics, that's basically the algebra review that I'm previously discussing. And at this point, all students have finished their uh, review of this of these topics and have taken an assessment on that. Um, so after I go through that assessment, I'll have a good understanding as to whether the students are kind of placed correctly or whether we need to kind of have a conversation as to you know whether this is the right course for them. After that, uh, we're just starting a conversation on further trigonometry, so higher level trig. We're gonna explore more functions. Some of these functions uh, the students have seen before, some of them they have not. Uh, and for the ones that they have seen before, we'll be going through and discussing them in uh, deeper detail there. We'll also be talking about combinatorics, which is what most people will consider uh, probability. And that is something that um, I really enjoy as a, as a statistics teacher as well. I enjoy the combinatorics. Reasoning and proof, um, this is a really, really big emphasis in the AA courses to help students understand um, how we can prove statements because there's different ways that we can do that. The year two topics, oh, sorry, linear algebra is also in the first year. That's a, a really quick chapter that we talk about there. Do, do, come on, next slide. Okay. There we go. Uh, in year two, we talk about calculus um, and statistics. Those are the primary uh, content that we talk about in the second year. Uh, as you'll see with the calculus, we do get into quite a bit of detail in calculus. Similarly, with statistics, we do get pretty deep into them. Um, the calculus is fairly close to the AB, calculus AB, um, that is the, the AP course. Um, the statistics course is fairly close to a full AP statistics, but there are some topics that are left out as well there. In addition to the second year uh, content, we'll be talking about the internal assessment, which is a 12 to 20 page paper that we'll talk about, I believe, on the next slide. And then there is a review time um, in preparation for the external exams, two or three exams, three if their students are in HL and two if they're in SL. More on the IA, I'm just gonna briefly talk about it because it is a senior year topic, although we will introduce it this year and students will do a practice um, IA this year as well, although a, an abbreviated one. Um, basically, students get to choose a topic of their choice, something that they have an interest in, and they get to explore the mathematics involved in it, um, and they really, really um, get to write 
um, and research and get deep into the topic. And it's something that we spend a lot of time on in class, um, but students will also be doing some research on their own for that as well. There are some examples um, that are available at the link posted below. I know you won't be able to see it as an actual link, but you could um, type that into your browser, or you could just type in Ivy Math AA internal assessment examples, and you can find plenty of examples that way too. <laughs> My presentation is not one to advance. There we go. External assessments. Um, oop, this is in May 2021. That should say in 22. For your students there, they'll be taking the external exams. Paper one is non-calculator. Paper two is calculator-based. And paper three for the HL students is also calculator-based. This is frustrating. Sorry about this. All right. Moving on, uh, connections to TOK, theory of knowledge. Generally speaking, uh, theory of knowledge is a just how do we learn, how do we think, um, how do we know things, and those are things that we talk about, um, the students talk about it in every course, uh, in addition to talking about it in mathematics. We talk about in this course, how do we know mathematics? How do we know when we know it? Do we know it if we can recite the um, theorem? Do we know it if we can uh, apply it to specific problems? Um, and we talk about conversations like this frequently, and that really helps students to have kind of ownership of their learning, and that's something that we believe a lot in in the IB uh, curriculum. International mindedness is also something we emphasize. Generally speaking, the math that we study was not um, developed in America for the most part, and for those reasons, it's important to understand where it came from. Um, so we'll talk about math history quite a bit. We're also going to talk about how, um, you know, we live in a global world right now. So how does the math that we learn impact that? Um, so we'll do things like study different cultures and, and their currencies um, and the different things that are parts of their culture as well. And those are things that I really enjoy getting into um, as well. So this course is very, very rigorous and students are going to be challenged. They're going to struggle at times. It's just the way it's going to be. But I'm here to help, and I want to make sure that you understand that. Um, every day, um, I'm posting my Meet link for my extra help session at the end of the day. Currently, all students can come to any session um, uh, any day of the week. Um, if it turns out where you know we're leading up to a big IB exam, and then that might be something where I say, OK, only IB students can come to an extra help session. Or conversely, if one of my other classes is having a big exam, I might say, OK, Wednesday is only for my AP statistics classes. Um, if that ends up happening, I'll make sure to post that on the Google Classroom pages for the students. And um, I'll offer those students who might need extra help from the other classes to reach out to me and set up a, either an individual or a small group extra help session. But students really should be proactive and really should take advantage of the opportunities of extra help. And so far, they really have been. I've really had a lot of the, the IB students in for extra help. My expectations, um, first of all, my goal is for students to understand math and how it plays a role in their current and future lives. My hope is that students will be successful in the course and earn a passing score on the IB exam. And my expectation is that students will put forth the effort necessary to be successful in a college level course. Contact information is right here. Uh, email is preferred, but you can leave me a voicemail if you want, and I'll give you a call back, um, whatever is uh, easier for you. Uh, and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for watching this video, for supporting your children to help them reach their potential. Um, that's my goal as well, so hopefully together we can push them to do uh, as well as they can. And they're very independent so far, and you know we're just going to continue to support them. And um, thank you for everything. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Take care.